Hi, folks. It's time to talk about deeper truths of Jairus' daughter. Today at Children of Our Savior Preschool at Chapel, we discuss the story of Jairus' daughter. And the story goes like this. Jesus is kind of the beginning half of his ministry, and he arrives in this town by boat. And as soon as he arrives, of course, he's greeted by a great crowd of people who have heard of his miracles of healing the blind, healing lepers, feeding the hungry, and all these healing-style miracles. But a man runs up to Jesus, and his name is Jairus, and evidently he has some connection with the local synagogue. He's like a ruler of the synagogue or something. And he falls down on his knees at Jesus' feet and entreated him greatly, saying, Lord, my little girl is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she might be made well. Jairus obviously had heard the reports of Jesus, whether or not he had heard Jesus talk before or had met him in person. He was going off of a prayer and going off of a rumor that this man Jesus can heal any kind of sickness, that he can drive out demons, that he can, that he can make crazy people stop being crazy and that kind of thing. And so he goes and lays it all out before him, not caring whether or not he looks like a fool in front of people, but simply pleading, Lord, come with me. And Jesus very simply says, take her to me. And so they go, and there's kind of an interim story in between the beginning and end of this story, which we won't go into, but suffice it to say, it has to do with the thick crowd of people through whom Jesus and Jairus had to travel to get to Jairus' house, to get to the 12-year-old girl. And in fact, one of the people uh, reaches out and touches the fringe on Jesus' garment with a very similar uh, conviction that if I only touch the fringe of his garment, then my illness, which has been plaguing me for 12 years, will disappear. And that turned out to be true. But we're going to skip past that and just say Jairus, his patience was having to be tested through this uh, endeavor. He was trying to get Jesus back to his house, and Jesus was being held up. Uh, so they finally get to Jairus' house. And like before they reach the door, a servant comes out who of, of Jairus' household and says, Master, send the teacher away. His services are not needed anymore. Your daughter has died. So in the time that Jairus had left his house or whatever and had gone to Jesus and Jesus had begun to make his way back to the house, the girl had actually breathed her last. Um, so Jesus, who was quite pleased, certainly with Jairus' faith in the beginning, now had to offer a word of encouragement. It says he heard that and he said, do not fear, only believe. So he goes into the house. And when he goes into the house to, to find where the girl has been laid, he sees all the mourners, right? He sees the, the team of people that have been gathered, and they would have been relatives or friends or neighbors mourning over the death of a child. Now, we don't go too much into this at preschool, right? We don't, we don't go too far into talking about the child died, the child died. This is for you and for me. This is for you and for me, especially perhaps those of us who are parents who can know the, the depth of the howling sorrow if a child were to pass away. Let's move into it then. He sees the people mourning and making a ruckus. And they may have been there uh, because they felt the burden of sorrow. Or just maybe, we know culturally that sometimes when somebody was at the point of death or someone died, you would actually hire in mourners. Now, it sounds strange to us, but think of you know, what you might see on television, on, on the news in the Middle East. People would mourn. That was really the style of expressing your grief and if you didn't have people around to express your to express grief for your loss well you'd hire people to do that it was it was kind of like inviting a choir to the funeral right he sees the mourners and jesus says take them all out of here the child is not dead but she is sleeping and now instead of crying and wailing it says they laughed at him they laughed at jesus because they knew that the girl had died. So he enters into the room, sending out everybody else except for his close disciples, Peter and James and John, maybe just two of those guys, I can't remember, and simply takes a little girl by the hand and says, little girl, I say to you, arise. And it says, she got up and started to talk. And her parents were overjoyed. It's seeing their daughter uh, alive. 
and not sick anymore. What do we get out of this story then? What are the what are the greater truths? Well, there's lots of stuff there that I, I guess I've hinted on. It's it's uh, the the power of faith, faith to take God at His word, um, and to insist that God, you must come and help. You must come and help to restore your child to life, because you promised that you are a God of life and you are a God of power and wisdom, and this is your will that we should go on living before you eternally. And in this case, Jesus literally takes a child out of death. And he sees the girl lying there, and he says, she's not dead. She's only sleeping. Which goes on throughout the rest of the New Testament, especially to inform the way we talk about death. Right? We don't, oftentimes we say so-and-so passed away, but Christians often say they fell asleep in the Lord. When someone dies, they fell asleep in the Lord. What's that saying? Well, it's what Jesus taught us to say, that death is just asleep. Why? Because you get woken up from it. Because you get woken up from it. When Jesus is raised from the dead on Easter morning, like how is he supposed to see death? He sees death as temporary and as non-life-threatening. And to our eyes, be even if death is so dark and if death is so scary and if death is so uncertain as to what it is, Jesus knows what it is. It's not unknown to him. It's not frightening to him. It is as if we are going down for our nap or for our bedtime, ready to get woke up in the morning by the sunshine of his resurrection. And so if death is altogether different before our Lord, then should not every other misfortune, every other cancer, every other illness, every other accident, every other threat or need or worry or extreme concern that we have, he can change it all with one word, can't he? And if he can, even if he doesn't choose to right now, then I can be happy that it's going all according to as he has planned. Why did little girl have to die? I don't know. But Jesus wanted to raise her from the dead, right? That's about all for today. Uh, the deeper truths of Jairus' daughter. Have a good day, and we'll talk with you the next time.